perfect pan roasted quail, radish fondant, ginger carrot orange puree, Iberico ham jus gras. Whether it's casual or fine dining, this dish will always have a place. So let's begin. So we're going to start by prepping our quail. We're going to cut off the wing tips. They don't have much meat, and because they're so small, they might end up burning. Save any remainders for a sauce later on. And now we're going to use a blowtorch to singe any quills or feathers, hairs, anything like that. There's nothing worse than a mouthful of feathers when you're eating your quail. So we need to be thorough, you need to turn the bird on its side, upside down, and get in all the nooks and crannies. And we don't want to keep the torch in one area too long. We also want to be careful not to burn anything. So the great thing about this recipe is the same technique applies to many other types of game birds. You can easily substitute pigeon or grouse. You can use Cornish game hens as well. Just keep in mind if they're red flesh birds, it's okay to serve them medium rare. If they're not, they need to be cooked well done just like a chicken would. Pigeon, quail, grouse, medium rare, everything else well done. So the outside of the bird is looking very clean now. The next step is to remove the wishbone. This will allow us to carve the bird more easily when it's cooked. So you want to take a sharp knife, you can feel the outline of the wishbone with your thumb, make a small incision, and then follow the bone all the way around. You want to be careful not to cut too deep, and next, simply just ease out the wishbone with your fingers, ease it out slowly, easily, you don't want to break it. It's definitely much easier if you can move the whole thing in one go. On any poultry, whether it's a small quail to a large turkey, it's a good idea to remove the wishbone. So next, we're going to put this on a pan and we're going to season this well. So we want to rotate the bird, we want to make sure that we got the seasoning everywhere, and we're going to put a little bit of extra salt in the cavity. Seasoning is important in general, but the salt will actually help crisp up the skin as well. Next, we're going to take a hot pan, a little bit of neutral oil, and we're going to put the quail in. So quails and grouse of this size actually cook quite quickly. Pigeons can be a little bit bigger. And if you do have a pigeon on the larger side, you should cook it the same way I'm cooking the quail right now. And after you've seared the whole bird and you have a nice color, you can put it in the oven just for a few minutes check with a cake tester and return to the pan. But today we have a fairly small quail, so we can do the whole process in the pan. So you want to sear all the sides, and after a minute or two throw in some butter and some thyme. So we want our breast to be nice and pink, not well done, not blue, and we want our legs to be well done. So tilt the pan and we're going to baste. Rotate the bird around and try and baste all sides of the bird. So it's only been about four minutes and our bird is almost cooked. The best way to do this is to insert a skewer into the breast, the thickest side of the breast, don't touch the bone, leave it in there for about 5-10 seconds and then you need to feel it on your wrist. If it's still cold, then we need to cook some more. Once it's warm, not hot, it's cooked. So we're going to check again. And there we go, it's warm, we're going to take it out of the pan and we're going to let this tiny bird rest for about two or three minutes. If they're bigger, like a pigeon or a chicken or something like that, you should rest it for about five to ten minutes. So there's nothing fancy here, it's just like carving a chicken, but smaller. So we're going to remove the legs and thighs, we're going to cut out some of the spine here, and then we're going to return the legs and thighs back to the pan, skin side down, and we want these well done, and we want them nice and crispy. You shouldn't really be afraid of overcooking the legs, just don't burn them. And now we're going to carve the breast meat. So you want to be gentle, take your sharp knife and try and find the top of the keel bone, and then just gently work away the meat from the bone. So repeat on the other side, and when you have the two breasts, we're going to clean them up a little bit. So we want to remove any bones, We'll start by removing the bone where the wing used to be. We're just going to cut on an angle. There's no meat on it anyway. And if there's any bone left from the keel bone, you can just simply cut that off. Clean this up. And then repeat with the other breast. So let's have a close look here. It's perfectly pink. Not blue, not well done. This is the best way to enjoy quail, pigeon, or grouse. If for some reason you prefer well done, simply just put these back in the pan, or you can just wait until the skewer is hot and not warm while you're basting your bird. 
So our leg and thighs are just about ready. Nice crispy skin, well done. And it's a wonderful contrast to the nice juicy medium rare breast meat. So again, we have beautiful crispy skin, just a little bit pink on the inside. I mean, just like a steak, the flavor completely changes when you cook this well done. So this is the best way to do it. So now we're gonna work on our garnish. We just have some radish fondants here. Simply cut the radish to the desired size, cover with water, a little bit of salt, and a tiny bit of butter, and let it cook and reduce until you get this syrupy, nice coated fondant. Check with a knife or a skewer, cake test or whatever, make sure they're cooked. And you also wanna make sure the butter and the water are emulsified with the radish. If the butter is split, it will look and taste greasy. When the butter is emulsified with the water, it will coat the radish perfectly, and it will taste creamy and velvety compared to greasy. So we're just gonna put some abstract dots of orange, carrot, and ginger puree. This is really one of the most versatile sauces ever. The sauce shouldn't be hot, but it should be warm. So now we're just going to place the breast meat on top of the fondants. And rather than just a flat plate, we wanna try and build give a little bit of height to the dish. That makes it much more elegant. So once we have the breasts in place, we're going to rest the leg and thighs alongside them. And we're just gonna drizzle a little bit of this Iberico ham jus gras. It just brings this dish to a whole nother level. It's super rich, it's a umami bomb. And now we're gonna take some carrot curls. These are raw, thinly sliced on the mandolin and lightly dressed with some vinegar and olive oil, a little bit of salt couple of radish coins, a little bit of sucren or baby gem that's been trimmed, some seasonal herbs like sorrel and fennel, a bit more sauce, and we're ready to serve. Game birds are one of the most delicious things you can possibly cook, if you cook them correctly. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will address them as soon as possible. And as always, happy cooking!